All right, Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachakudash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and truth, and the 130 believers out there. To you all, I say Shalom and greetings. And Lord willing, this lesson, was ed lesson is edifying. So, um, this is not going to be the easiest lesson to uh, project. I couldn't think of any other way. I was trying to think of a way I could do this more uh, with more illustration. So, um, I didn't have to go, you know, uh, point by point as far as how I'm, I'm about to pull these names up. But it was the best way. Uh, for edification and uh, clarity that I can think of. So forgive me and be patient. But I did think that the Lord put it on my spirit to do this lesson because how it came about originally is because uh, I was with the Miami brothers um, this past weekend. And, uh, you know, I don't know where we just started talking about Elam. And so then uh, one of the brothers said, what does Elam mean again? And then, um, you know, like maybe one or two brothers said something and then you know, a uh, lawyer was like, uh, it means like eternity or something like that. And so then I looked it up and it said eternal. And so that that sparked me to think about the other nations and what their names mean, uh, you know, and I wanted to start, you know, so I'm going to go through these, the 18 nations and what their names mean. Now, granted, we understand that this blue letter Bible, it goes off on several of these, you know, we do the best we can, but also I was looking and I have a very old, uh, Zondervan's Bible dictionary in front of me. It's, uh, let me see if I can see the year on it. This, this boy is, it's mad old. It's like four times the size of, you know, the modern day ones we have now. Um, let me see. I don't even think it has, I know it has a year on it somewhere. Uh, 1963. It says the copyright 1963, one from 1964 and 1967. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's it's a pretty old edition of it, but it has, some, has a wealth of information in here, uh, some things that are helpful. So I'm just try going to try to read through these through the blue there, and some of these I might touch on from this uh, Zondervan's. So uh, I'm not going to be getting, you know, I can read some of the presets, but this is more edification for the names of the nations more so than uh, pulling out verses. So uh, Lord willing, this ed lesson is edifying and uh, Baba Kushar, just be a little patient with me as I try to go through these. All right. So this one here we know is uh, Yasha Allah. All right. And so that's why, you know, they got Yisrael, but Yasha Allah. All right. From Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Um, um because and see this is what i mean see like the very just off the jump it says god prevails and that's not what israel means okay israel is a compound word all right when you go into the uh and see this this is a better strong's definition sometimes give you a, a better understanding than looking at the uh the outline or the interlinear concordance all right because see it says down here it says he will rule as god okay which uh which really means the most Israel and is three three words Yah Shar Allah, all right Yah. When you put Yah at the beginning of a sentence, it means He, all right. And Shar is a prince in uh in Hebrew, and Allah means power or God. So it means He, Prince God, or He, Son of God. All right. So it, when it when it says down here, he will rule as God. That's a closer understanding of it rather than God prevails. OK, so um, that's that's Israel. You know, that's us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. I want to get that out the way. OK, so now we know most brothers know what this next one is, you know, and I should put his ass last. But, you know, it's all through the spirit. I'm just going down the list. Uh, you know, the list that brothers got. OK, so, of course, next we have. The infamous fugitive and vagabond, Esau Edom. All right. So let's go to the name Edom. I hate how they switched up the blue letter to they changed it to the other side. All right. But Edom, it says right here, it says Ad Adam, but we know it's Adawam. OK. And I think, uh, let me see, does it say it? When you really go into this word and you uh, go back in the, and you keep clicking away, it'll say Adawam. See, like even here, let me see if I can click on it. 
right? Even here, you see that's a ah da wa ma, right? That's ada wam, okay, which means red, okay. So and he why Esau was called that's known as the the so called white nation. Why was he called red? Is because, um, you know, obviously he was born red in pigmentation. All right, his descendants would be red, and he also has that thirst uh, for blood. Okay, according to Ezekiel the thirty fifth chapter. You know, actually, let me let me just get that real quick, because I will feel a little weird if I'm just not getting any precepts. So forgive me. Um, excuse that. Uh, this is Ezekiel thirty five and uh, five. It says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Right. Which is us by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord power. I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee, right? So that's the Heavenly Father saying that's what's going to happen to the nation of Edom. They're going to be pursued by blood, and they're going to go into captivity for uh, for the blood of the children of Israel, all right, and for destroying us and, and doing things to us when our, our time of judgment had an end. You know, Esau wanted to continue and further the affliction, okay? So now let's get the Elamites. OK, and I already mentioned that one at the beginning of the lesson, but and most of these nations can be found in Genesis, the 10th chapter. OK, um, but this says Elam, all right, which is I alum. OK, and it says eternity. Right. So, um, yeah, so I think that lawyer might have said eternal and then it says eternity, you know, but hey, <laughs> they're going to have eternity. It's going to seem like eternity when they get in them chains, man. All right. <laughs> At the end of the day, because I remember I used to think Elon meant uh, young. All right. But it, it means eternity. OK. And they're going to be <laughs> eternally bonding them chains for a thousand years. OK. Um, which are the so-called Indians. Right. The Elamites are the so-called Indians. OK. So now let's go next to Ashur, which is in the same one. Genesis. I'll just read that. Genesis 10 and 22. The children of Shem which are Elam and Ashur and are Faxad and Lud and Aram. And see, this is how you have to know that just because you're like, they try to say anti-Semitic, but see the Elamites are Semitic, right? The Assyrians are Semitic. Okay. The Assyrians uh, are Semitic. The Israelites are Semitic. All right. The Edomites are Semitic, you know, which is really Shemitic, you know, but that that's, so that's they're going off. The Amalekites are going off by saying that. And see, this is what I mean by I hate they switched it up because it used to look like this. Right. But they switched up the format of it recently, I guess, with the latest update. But uh, now we're going to go to a shore. Right. And it says here, uh, Ashawar. OK, which means a step, a step. Actually, let, and let me go to this one uh, in the Zondervan's because uh, I looked it up. In the the blue letter, obviously, but I just want to see uh, what it says in here as well. But these people are uh, different uh, mingling of uh, Arabs. You know, the uh, the big bro, uh, Mathathia, actually um, out in Iowa was uh, mentioning this in a chat earlier yesterday or to earlier today. And so, uh, you know, that it means Arab. Arab simply means mixed. All right, and there were a mixed mixed group of um, those those different uh, those different nations over there. Let me see. I'm trying to see if I can find. It. Okay, let's see what it says. Ashore. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it has Ashore in here, and it has Assyria. Let's just see if I can quick something. No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say much on Ashore. It just says the God of the Assyrians, their reputed human founder, the ancient capital of the country, often the nation Assyria. Ashur is the builder of the. OK, so they're saying that that's an idol God. But uh, going down to Assyria, originally a land between the upper Tigris and Zab rivers with its capital first at Assur, later at Nineveh. Assyria was taken over in the third millennium B.C. by the Semites from Arabia. First mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 2 and 14. Okay, let me see if I can jump down. Okay, they're not giving me really if I was going to 
um, find any more info on it. They're not giving me kind of what I was looking for. All right. But this is a good, this is a good, uh, it's a book. I actually stumbled on this at like a, a Goodwill or something like that one day, you know, it's a, it's a good, it's a good book. You know, when we find these old books that let us break down the history and give us certain, uh, terminology about the different nations and about words, you know, they're always helpful. So, okay. So this says a step and that, that went into the right here, right? Cause it says apparently in the sense of successful, right? Uh, it's region and it's empire. So, you know, a lot of these, uh, sometimes these nations are described. They are because of their, uh, their land as well. Right. It says, uh, Okay, I thought that was going to give me something as well, but let's go to this area. Right, so sometimes it has sometimes to do with their land, but all right, on to the next one, okay, which is um, a rum, okay, a rum, which are the Syrians, okay, when you think about the people over in Damascus, you know, okay, let's see, a rum down here, it says a rum or Arameans. Uh, exalted okay and that doesn't mean exalted like they're exalted above the children of israel that's not what that means okay sometimes it's uh it's dealing with their land hey, and it goes into their pride as well too though all right but it says the high land right it says uh to be high to swell up to exalt oneself you see that so it's like a puff proud thing but it's also dealing with their land being high as well but hey, what did the scripture say? Let me see that. Um, high brought low. So like you. No, that's not what I want. There's a scripture that's uh ba that basically says um, you know, all the pride of man should be brought low. You know, let me see if I can type in pride low. Oh, there it is. Proverbs 29 and 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You see this? So honor is, you know, honor uh, before humility. You know what I mean? Honor is a, it's a big thing. So it says a man's pride shall bring him low. So that pride that's within them is going to be their, their downfall, man. You know, um, Okay, next. And Syria, they be getting a hit up, man. If you're, uh, when you look into those those military uh, tactics that Esau be doing, man, they be tagging up Syria, man. All right. The rum be getting it. Okay. Uh, so now let's go to uh, Ishmael next. Okay. <laughs> Ishmael. Ishmael be hurt because they ain't get that, that birthright. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go to this one here, Genesis 16 and 15. It says, And Hagar bare Abram, which is Abraham, a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abraham's name was changed to Abraham, which means Abraham, uh, father of nations. Okay. And this is, you know, this is why. Okay. Let's see, Ishmael. It says, God will hear, but it's really. Uh, uh, you know, like he, he hears power. He has heard of the power, right? Because, uh, it says God will hear, but see, this is why the blue letter try to make things sound cute and cool. Like God will hear, but it's really like he has heard, uh, uh, you know, he has heard of God, you know, uh, because of, of course the Lord did have a little, uh, temporary, how should I say temporary mercy on Ishmael because he still was born of Abraham. So the Lord didn't completely cast him out. You know, he still had his 12 princes and, and things like that. But, um, Yashamai Allah, that's how you say, that's how you say that, um, Yashamai Allah. And that's why another reason our people, what does the Lord say? Uh, Ishmael going to be a wild man. Number one, hold on. Let's, let's get that with that. I think that's in Genesis 17. All right. Let me see if I can find that real quick. 17 and it's like yeah see this one right here it says 
Genesis 17 and 19, it says, And the Most High says, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. You see that? So the, the seed is with Israel, and that's when you go to Romans, uh, the ninth chapter as well, you know. It's according to the spirit, you know, uh, not not the, the child of the flesh, because Ishmael is the child of the flesh. It's saying, as, as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. See, that's why you have uh, the scriptures talk about they shall worship wood and stone, right? And so that stone, that um, that uh, Islam, you know, they're big off into that. And a, a lot of our people off into that too, you know. So the Lord gave him a season. The Lord made him fruitful, but they still heathens, you know, they still are heathen. It says, um, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah bare unto thee at the time of the next year. You know, let me get that wild man real quick. I think it's in that same chapter. Oh, it was 16. Uh, Genesis 16 and 12. This is talking about Ishmael. Let me just click on it. Uh, it says, uh, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hands against him. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And see, that's what that's why people always anytime some bombing shit going on. First people they look at is Ishmael, man. You know, Ishmael is always off into that that crazy nonsense, man. He's a wild. He's a wild man. You know, thus said the scriptures, thus said the Bible. So when we be when you be hearing about them blowing each other up and doing all that crazy stuff, that's their that's a trait that was given to them. OK, but let me continue on. I don't want to dwell on these too much because it is 18 of these hot boys. All right. Um, next, we got a uh, Moab. Right. And I already know. I already know what most of these mean, but it's still edifying just to go through them. Uh, this is Genesis 19 to 37. Uh, let me start at 36. It said, thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Right. So you got to know the story of what happened after Lot fled Sodom and Gomorrah with his wife and his two daughters. His wife looked back on Babylon the Great and she was turned. I mean, excuse me, uh, looked back on Sodom and Gomorrah and she was turned into a pillar of salt because she was told not to look back. And so now his daughters were left alive. And his daughters were with him and they thought that the world was going to to end. And so what did they do? They got their father drunk two nights in a row and uh, they slept with him, you know, each night. And so they they had children from him, which is the, the first instance of uh, incest. OK. And so the, his name and uh, the son of the first daughter is Mawa Abba. OK. Uh, Mawa Abba, which means. Of his father, you know, because he, he came he came from his dad. And that's we always talk about uh, Moabites and, and Ammonites and why they have the almond shaped eyes. You know, people call them chinks and stuff like that and slanty eyes. And that's because we say that that was a, um, a factor, a feature that was derived from uh, incest, uh, incestual act. OK, so that means of my father. So that's when you got Moabite, the so-called Chinese. Okay, next we got, all right, Ben-Ami, which is his son's name, which is the father of the children of Ammon, all right, and Ammon is I'm a one, okay, I'm a one, which means tribal, you know, uh, inbred, <laughs> oh shit, I didn't even see the inbred part, you know, when they say you have an inbred son, all right, it's because, uh, uh, you are produced by incest, just like they, uh, what's that damn movie called? Uh, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle <laughs> and they got the one, they got the one son locked them in the basement. They like, yeah, nothing but our inbred son in the basement. And he was like deformed. His face was all messed up. You know, he was just out of pocket because he's an inbred son. Right. And so tribal means of his family, his family tribe. Right. What, what does it say here? It says that is son of my relative or kindred. Born from incest. It says that right there. You see what I'm saying? So that's why the Ammonites uh, look and act the way that they do. You know, and this is why we be saying like Ammonites and Moabites, they're not intelligent. They just have good memory and they have to do a whole lot to really surpass everyone else. You know, they're really incest children. 
Okay. Uh, so on to the next one. Uh, we got Kush. And I ain't talking about the weed. All right. We got Kush here, which is a son of Ham. Okay. Son Ham's name in Hebrew is Kham, which means hot. So this is going to be interesting. I, I, when I found this one out, his name is Kawash in the Hebrew, and it means black. <laughs> you see that? So which is crazy because they call us black people, right? You have uh, so-called Africans. You have Hamites calling us black people. But really, the Ethiopians over there, they're, uh, I mean, they're brown skinned too. You know, don't get that confused. Everybody, that's a, you know, everybody on earth is a shade of brown or red. That's really what it comes down to, you know, uh, even Moab and, uh, Ammon as they really a shade of brown. Some of them be shades of red too, though, but most of them is shades of brown too. They call them the yellow man, but we know what's up. Okay. And so you got Kawash here or the Ethiopians. All right. And that says black. And another word for black in Hebrew is uh, Shakur or Shakawar. That's another word for black as well, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't looked it up in a while, but I, th I believe that's right. You know, matter of fact, let me just look up black real quick. Because that's, that's just, okay, no black hair in it. Let me see. It's been a while since I did colors. I remember years ago I did a video on uh on colors. What does it say? See that? Yeah. Shakhar. Shakhar. Yep. Yep. Black. Okay. All right. So uh, next we got um, the Egyptians. Okay. Which is in the scriptures. The forefather was known as Mizraim. All right. Which in the Hebrew is Matazarium. Okay. And see, we know that it's, it's a partially means bitter. As a matter of fact, let me look for that one in this uh, this as well. The uh, the Zondervans, all right, because they'll have here. It says land of the cops or the Coptics, but that the the important one is under where it says because that says Egypt, but the Egyptians, right? It says double straits, and that's what we say. Uh, you know that means it really goes back to being bitter. But double straights, you know, we always talk about the word straight gate, right? Which means a posi position of difficulty. Okay. And so there, a double straights. Okay. That's why you got the yum at the end of Matazar yum, you know, double straights. All right. Um, let me see. Mizraim, Mizraim. Okay. Let me see if I can find this. Bear with me one second. I just want to see what it says. Oh, shit. They got old money in here. I need to. I need to see. I need to go through this book because <laughs> like I didn't check it out. But, you know, some stuff you pass over, you're like, oh, shit. But um, let's see. Miss Ryan. OK, it says the second son of Ham is associated with northeastern Africa, possibly along with his brothers. Cush and put some of the some of the sins of Miss Ryan probably also linked with this area. The usual Hebrew word for Egypt and always. So translated in the RSV. Okay, so they don't have much there. You know. But Matazarium. Okay. Alright, on to the next. We got a... Uh, put or foot. But put. Alright. Put a foot in his ass. Alright. Right here. Which is Pawat. Pawat. Okay. And it means a bow. A bow, okay. The name of the descendants and their uh, and their region, and of a Persian tribe. You know that Persian tribe is a little through. You know that's off, because they they are the they are the uh, North Africans, okay. Which granted, you know you're gonna have mingled some of these tribes. Some of these people are gonna be mingled, Jay. Just like at the end of the day, how you have how we're mingled amongst. Everybody, see, that's not the same for everybody, but there are some of them that are mingled. You have people that might look like Elamites that are really, uh, you know, so called North African that are really from the uh, the nation of Pawat, you know. So you're going to have situations like that, but it's just not going to be on a vast scale like it is for the tribe, the nation of Israel, because we've been everywhere and we've been under uh, subjection from everybody. And so that's why it's on much a larger scale for us. According to biblical prophecy, we will be scattered among all the nations. Okay. Next we got Canaan here. Okay. 
Canaan means lowland. It's another meaning for Canaan as well. Yeah, they got merchant trader, traffic traffickers, and these are the uh, these are the so-called so South Africans. Okay, merchant trader. Okay. It says the fourth son of Ham and the progenitor of the Phoenicians and the various nations who people the coast of Palestine. You know, and a lot of these times, some of this stuff be mixed up, you know, and I'm, I'm you are you. I, that's the thing. We always say you got to use the blue letter as a, you know, as a guide. But sometimes you got to know what stuff in here is folly. Right. So now we got Genesis 10 and 2, the sons of Japheth. Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus. Okay. And and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rifath and Togarma. Alright, so let's see here. What we got for Gomer. Alright, which is uh the people of Turkey. Okay, and Gomer means complete, which is Gamar, right? Gamar it means complete. Okay. Complete. Okay, next is, I believe, the same chapter, Magog, right? Like Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, All right? Excuse me, I clicked on Gomer again, forgive me. Magog, which is Magawag, okay, Magawag. It just says land of Gog. You know, this is what I'm talking about, the, the region is mountain. It says a, bar a barbarous northern region. So it doesn't go into much detail on this one. Maybe actually I can look that one up, too, and see if they have something here on that. You know, and I, and I could have uh, found other resources to try to go in these, but it was kind of late. And I, you know, I already knew this was going to take a nice little minute to even uh, pull out some of these. So it's really through the spirit. You know, if you brothers find any more information or details that you'd like to add, you know, feel free to put it in the comment board. It's all for edification, and I, I truly appreciate it, and I'm sure the congregation will as well. All right. Um, let me see. It says, uh, Magog, a son of Japheth. Josephus and Greek writers generally apply the name to the Scythians. Modern Christian writers indicate the Tartars of Russia and of Southern Europe the names of King Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal resemble the modern Russia, Moscow, and Tobolsk. So, um, right. See that? So, we are, Magog, we know we're talk, you're talking about Russia. So, when we, when we use those scriptures, see, they back it up in this, in this book here. Resemble the modern Russia, right? Uh, it says, the nations which are on the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, Revelation 28, means all the ungodly nations of the earth who who oppose the people of God. Wow, you see that? So who's a, let me let me go to Revelation 20 and 8 real quick. Hey, who who are the people that are there and they're Edomites by the way too, but they're uh, like they are a sect of of Edomites, right? So you have to that's when you think about these these different nations, right? Uh, right. So Revelation 28 and shall go out to deceive the nations which are on the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog together to whom the battle of the number of sea is as the sand of the sea. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Right. And see, the uh, the children of Israel are as the sand of the sea, man. But um, I wanted to make a quick point. So we, we know we have Edom. Right. As the as a nation. And you have uh, uh, Gomer as a nation. You have uh, uh, Magog as a nation, right? Uh, but all of these are all Edomites, just like you have um, uh, the so-called Egyptians, the so-called North Africans, so-called South Africans. All of those are all Hamites, right? So these are, there are 18 nations, but they're still under a category of other, of other people. You know what I'm saying? And how, at least maybe it make it to be easier identifiable for for us through the spirit. OK, now let's go to the next one. Uh, Javon, which is your one. All right. Shout out to the brother out in South Carolina. All right. Uh, your one. OK, which means Iona, Ionia or Greece. Ionia or Greece, and it also says effervescing, hot and active. Okay. All right, so those are those are the Greeks. 
Okay, on to the next one. It says uh, the Germans, Ashkenaz, and see Ashkenaz. We should we should know who those are. Ashkenaz. Those that's Amalek, you know. That's Amalek right there. And see, that's another thing. Yeah, Amalek is a, are Edomites too. Amalek are Edomites too, and, and they'll tell you. They say I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. They'll say stuff like that, right? It says, and it's crazy because their name, it says, a man has sprinkled fire as scattered. You see that? Because when you know, Ash means uh, fire, right? Ash means fire. A fire has scattered. And see, the thing is, what does this say down here? I see something I say about Jews. It says, the modern Jews understand it to be Germany and call that country by this Hebrew name, which is only to be attributed to their wonderful ignorance of geography, okay. So yeah, those are the those are the Amalekites, okay. And what did the Lord say about Amalek? Let's see. Exodus seventeen and sixteen. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation, right? Those are Amalekites, man. Right? Those are the the so called. Jews, the fake Jews, the people that are trying to steal our heritage and make it for their own. All right. And uh, we got, uh, I think, two, two more. OK. Uh, let's see. Span. Oh, I'm about to say Spanish. Forgive me. Uh, Tarshish. Tarshish, which is, uh, I believe, the Spaniards. Spanish. OK. Which is uh, Tarsha Yash, Tarsha Yash, okay. It says yellow jasper, right? A stone, and it's also got another meaning. Um, it breaking or subjection, yeah. It says breaking or subjection. So hey, we're gonna get get down on uh on Tarsha's too, man. You know they had a great hand in uh the things that they were doing to the children of Israel, man. Okay. They had a great hand in that, all right? And I believe uh, Jonah, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. Jonah was residing in Tarshish for, or a resident of Tarshish for some time. I could be wrong. Shit. Tarshish. Oh, he went into Tarshish, right, right, forgive me. Yeah, he fled to Tarshish when he was running in the first place. But let me see. I'm sure it's, it's going to give me... It's probably going to give me the same understanding. I just wanted to see if it, if it was anything a little different. Nope, nope, same thing. Okay. Okay, now let me go to uh, last and certainly not least because that would be Esau. <laughs> but these are, hey, these are these Edomites too? Let me see. Oh, and see, that's the thing. So when you type in Cyprus, right, because the last one would say Cyprus, okay? But in Hebrew, it's Katayam, which is uh uh, Chittim or Kittim in the scriptures. But see, when you read Cyprus, it only gives you New Testament ones. But I still want to bring it out just for edification and see what it says on here. Okay. So Cyprus. Uh, Cuprios. Let me see. Strong's G 2953. Cuprios. 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 Right. A native of Cyprus. Inhabitant of Cyprus, it didn't give me much there, but then I clicked this here, the root, and then that did say it means love or a blossom, and it's a very fertile and delightful land, island off the Mediterranean, okay, but also, when you, another word for that in, 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 uh, in the scriptures is Chittim, okay, see so out the coast of Chittim, all right, so now let me click on this one. It says, Katayam, all right, Katayam, which means bruisers, a general term for all islanders of Mediterranean Sea, an unused name denoting Cyprus only in the plural. See that? So these are the same people, right? These are the same people. But sometimes they'll have uh, names for different groups in the scriptures, just like, you know, we know that when we see what? 
And we see Idumia, right? We know that that's referring to the Edomites. So sometimes they get they get these different names and stuff like that. But the, the Lord the Lord put us up on game. Okay, so I'm tripping. Am I tripping? I'm, a, I'm like looking at the sentence. I couldn't even see it. Okay. All right. You know, the Lord put us up on game where we're able to see who these nations are and figure out, like, well, look at that. I do me, eat them. You see that? Eat them. <laughs> Red. Right there. You know, so ain't no escaping this thing, man. The Lord, matter of fact, let me see that. Here we go. Skirts. Uh, this is Jeremiah uh, 13 and 26. It says, now, therefore, I will discover thy skirts upon thy face that they shame that thy shame may appear. And see, we're we're exposing all of these different nations uh, for who they are and who they, what their nationalities are, uh, according to the Bible. All right. That's that. And that's what's going on. Not according to what Esau caused them. OK. This is uh, Genesis 27 and 29. It says. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. You know, the nation, the uh, the, the nation, that's ultimately what's going to happen with all of the other nations uh, coming up, coming around the Israelites. They're going to bow to us uh, through Yahweh Hashem Okay. See, okay. and we're not supposed to bow to them nor their gods, but you know, we in Babylon right now, but it's going to come a time where we're going to rule. We're going to be the people that, uh, that are ruling the earth. All right. Look, Isaiah 66 and 19. And I will set a sign among them and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, Pool and Lud that draw the bow. And it's funny because what do you say? Uh, who is that? Put to uh, the bow. It says to two ball and Javon to the isles afar of off that have not heard my fame. Neither have seen my glory and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Right. And so there's going to be people of us that are in all of those different names. All of the different countries, and they're going to declare it. They, if they haven't heard the Lord's name, they're going to hear it, and the Lord is going to declare His glory amongst them using His prophets. Hey, so Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I know it's a little lengthy and a little choppy trying to go through it, but I pray it was edifying to you all, uh, you brothers and you few sisters out there. So, uh, Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakhodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.